and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you're here and that you came back for the second episode of our two-part series, Not Today, Satan. This is where we sit down with Pastor Justin Bridges and JSMI's International Director, Joe McCroskey. So we've been talking about uh, being delivered from demonic oppression and what happens in services when people are receiving their freedom and how do we respond. And so this part of the conversation just gets richer and richer, and we didn't want to cut any of it out, which is why we broke it into two parts for you. So if you didn't get a chance to hear the first one, I encourage you to go back and listen to that, and then come and hear the rest of the conversation. Uh, without any further ado, let's jump in. And it's to bring anything it, where it says, why didn't it work, is to bring doubt and unbelief right. and fear in, right. uh, and totally and you've seen it i've seen it where it totally destroyed the families but there was a my first deal that was a spirit of infirmity and that's a spirit evil spirit of infirmity of sickness guy comes up in the healing line brother jerry and me are in the healing line brother jerry said you take this section i'll take this section guy comes up well we both had mics and the guy and as soon as he came up the lord said joe you're going to have to tell him something and so, you know, you don't really want to say a whole lot where people hear you on the mic. So I reached down and turned my mic off. I said, so, Lord, what do I tell him? He said, he's going to lose all, all his benefits if I heal his body, and I'm willing to heal his body. And so I, I, I thought, oh, my gosh, you know, I really don't want to do this, you know. But I knew his healing, if he's going to get it, that's, he's going to have to make a decision, his decision. So I said, you know. God's here to heal you. And when you receive your healing, you're going to lose all your benefits. He knew exactly what it was. He says, so I said, so are you willing to be healed and whole, but you won't have these benefits? No. Wow. Turned and walked away. No, he turned to walk wow. away. I said, well, go sit down. I couldn't help him. Wow. No sense even laying hands on him. I couldn't help him. I just shared the truth with him. He, and he, re he heard it, but he didn't want that. So I don't know to this day, that guy probably is still receiving benefits and probably sick, you know, maybe dead now. I don't know. So it's, it's about the wheel a lot of times, but the, the congregation wouldn't see that. So they might say, so why wasn't he healed? They didn't hear what I said. Okay. Or what God said through me. So I'm curious now, because it's really easy to recognize something when it's face value, like a demon when it comes to demon, but you mentioned earlier, a wolf in sheep's clothing and I just think about, and I, you guys would probably know much more than I would, there seems to be a lot of tolerance for, and I call it soft demonics, you know what I mean? Like new age, like enneagrams, astrology. Right. Um, oh, a lot of stuff. Things yeah. inter being introduced like yoga, <laughs> you know, something as simple as seeming, oh, we go to yoga. Like, well, no, you're, you're chanting to, de to demons. You know, right. you're, you're, you're doing a lot of introduction and, and soft demonology mm -hmm. a tolerance for it. Like you're, you're introducing yourself to these things and it seems to be a real big, issue with the younger generation, obviously, mm -hmm. but like, we kind of like, it's like, wow, we don't really, we don't address it properly sometimes. And it kind of lets us seep into the back door, a blind spot, so to speak. Well, I think just one, I, I think we need to establish, I don't think, I, I, I personally don't believe all yoga is bad. Not all, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> so, let, me, let, me, let me go back and say like, the, you're right, you're right. But the ones that were you're, you're exactly, I, I apologize chanting, if I didn't you're saying clarify things properly, over, that's yes. more new age Buddhist. Yeah. Well, um, and, and a lot of the stuff that's happening in the world today, I mean, I didn't have to go through that growing up at all where some of my grandchildren are going to go through stuff I didn't go through. Right. And, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I seen a deal today on uh, one of the news deals, and I thought if that would have happened back when I was a police officer, they would have been thrown in jail, and they couldn't get out for probably five years. Mm -hmm. Okay? But they've accepted it because they don't want to offend anybody. Well, that's opening up things, too, because then people think, well, maybe it's okay, yeah. you know. And it's all about deceiving. I mean, it says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but it's principality and power and something that can deceive us into thinking this is the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. And, of course, we see a lot of that in the world today. I would say to, to out of my heart, I would say they're, they're strongholds that open the door to other things. For sure. And I would say any, because most of the things, whether it's chanting, um, yoga, whether it's 
when I asked her, I said, you know, well, hey, I drink, you know, I drink so much, but I, I don't get drunk. Well, it was like, when's that line? Yeah. And it, to me, I'm, I'm, this is not an argument of alcohol, but the, sure. but the issue is I asked is like, well, you know, I just like to relax. I was like, well, why do you need a substance to relax? Well, I smoke one every once in a while, like, you know, doesn't hurt me. Yeah, it's like why do you, why do you do that? And so this isn't a this isn't a thing to nitpick what's sin, what's not sin. This is sure. the point. Sure. The point is is we're talking about the doors to to make those things are strongholds. And the next thing you know, it develops a stronghold that becomes a belief system. And the next thing you know, it's like you exalt your belief system. But what does the word say? Mm-hmm. Because my only way for peace is Jesus. Right. My only way for peace is the Holy Spirit. My only way to operate in 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 the goodness of God and the power of God is the Holy Spirit. So so the thing is, is anytime we get, we try to add something to our lives right. that's not the Word and the Spirit, it's going to develop a stronghold. I think the key scripture that I've always used in in a lot of teachings, but it's Corinthians ten chapter four and five. For the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, the pulling down of strongholds. And that's what we're talking about. Uh, if we might not know it's a stronghold, but God will tell us it is. Mm-hmm. If the Holy Spirit says, stay away from that, you stay away from it. So it's, he's saying our weapons of warfare can pull those things down. Then the last part I love, casting down imaginations, and that's where a lot of it is right there. Mm-hmm. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, which is the Word of God, bringing into captivity ever thought to the obedience of Christ. You'll know the perfect will of God if you renew your mind. To what? The Word of God, not the news. And that's where most, even our Christians, are obsessed with news now, and then repeat it. Right. And what's coming out of our mouth is important. I mean, you know, even if you feel like a demonic force is around, you're going to know. You'll discern it. The Lord will show you. But it might not be something you're even dealing with other than the prayer. You might just pray in the Spirit. Right. Somebody else's job might be the part to take care of it. So that kind of leads me to my next thing. And what I wanted to do in this podcast is not only just air out some of this stuff, but also equip the people listening. So there have been times, uh, you know, I work in the hospital and, you know, there's stuff that happens in there all the time. And one of the things the Lord had spoke to me is there was a, say a couple of different situations, but one where I knew what God was telling me to do, what my part was, and it still ended in the person's death. And I, and I prayed, I said, God, what happened? Not yeah. why did it not work? Not anything, but just so I could understand. And he said, Tanya, there's a lot more going on in the spirit realm than you're aware of. All always. I need you to do is to be obedient to what I'm telling all, you. Always. So always. in light of all of this, how do we equip our saints to really do the work of the ministry, whether they're at the workplace or in the grocery store or in the lobby of the church? How do we equip our people and what is their role in a corporate setting. Oh, let me let me share this. Uh, I, I, this isn't to regress because this will answer your question. I think first thing as believers, and I'll, I'll say some other things here in a moment, but we have to understand discernment. Um, I want to tell a story. Um, when we were in Africa, the last time we were in Africa, we were doing these things in Kenya called Kenyan Student Christian Fellowships. And they would be these different camps that we would do it's kind of like their summer camp, so to speak, that these Christian leaders, and they weren't all Christians, it was just an opportunity for some of them to get away, kind of like some of our youth go to youth camp, but yet they're, 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 they may not be, they're, they're there to get away with their friends or whatever, and in the process, they have an encounter with God. And, um, and so we, we were in the first session of this meeting. We only were at this camp one day. And so um, I would I would have direction, and I, I, so I had this one person minister, and um, I'm sitting there, and it was the atmosphere was so negative. I mean, the atmosphere you could, it was so heavily oppressed, yeah. and and so I knew for me it was like I I didn't hear right, and I I could go into what my fault was that but that's not the point of, of of this but but um because i'm always asked the lord i, I want to be led better and he directed me on what 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 happened and why it happened and and so we finished that session and i was i you know it was kind of like jesus knocking over the tables in the in the in the in the temple that's how i felt inside i felt like okay all right it's almost like we were getting whipped by the enemy in this first session because it was like nothing was happening, nothing was changed. It was like cricket, cricket. Um, God wasn't moving. The anointing wasn't there. 
No chains were being broken. Nothing was happening. I felt like every word that was spoken, and this is nothing against them, was just falling to the ground. And I was like, Lord, you know, and so so we walked, we had, we had a break and we walked over to the next to, to over where we were having, going to get some water. And the Lord said, you need to shift it, shift things up. So I went to the people I had scheduled to minister. Hey, you know, I apologize, but the Lord's telling me to, telling me to change something. I, we went in, I said, we all need to pray in the spirit right now. Yeah. And so we were praying in the spirit just, just for probably about 10 minutes. And it immediately in a matter of seconds, I saw a vision of the whole service. And I saw people, I saw, I saw what, I saw where, this was nothing planned. And I said, and the Lord said, I want you to minister about baggage. And, um, and I said, so I had a backpack and I had, um, Deborah, I said, I had a guy that was a rapper that was with us. And I said, I want you to start with, I want you, they're going to play this Lecrae song and they're going to start with this. And I, I saw all this in a moment. And, um, and then, then just in the middle of what I want you to preach, I don't know what I'm preaching. I just know I'm going to talk about baggage. And he said, grab a backpack. And next thing you know, while I'm preaching, I said, I told this person to come up and give a testimony about this. And then the Lord said, that, that person, okay, come up and get, this is part of our team, this person. And next thing you know, I started, I started preaching. The anointing of God fell. Then all of a sudden when that, that and then I had Deborah walking around the perimeter <laughs> While, while this was, you know, singing uh, Break Every Chain. And and then next thing I know, it's like we have, and there's probably, I don't know, there could have been three to 500 kids in this in this room. And next thing I know, they all come down. And, and then so as we're preaching, I look over and, and, and just the anointing hits the place and start dealing with the demonic oppression that was oh, yeah. in the place and demonic spirits. Next thing you know, I mean... Uh, there was, I looked over one girl, the back of her head was touching the middle of her back and you can't do that physically. No. And, and so, and because I knew the, what was happening and the way she was contorted, that this, this was not natural. This was de- definitely, um, she wasn't from Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> um, and, um, and so I had one of our Kenya representatives and one of our group take them out, yep. take her out. Yeah. And, and so that was happening all over the place, but, but we had to, we had to shift the atmosphere. So I knew that if I didn't take authority over the atmosphere, then, then the enemy was going to continue to reign over, over that meeting. And then therefore continue to reign over those people. And you, you should, you could tell a difference in every kid, uh, every young person when that, when, uh, at the end of that service. Because when we walked in, I knew it was heavy. And I was like, this, mm-hmm. there's something going on here. And, but when we left, y- you know, they would look at us because before they all just had their heads down. And you think, you say, oh, well, you're in Africa. They don't have the influence as America does. You're wrong because yeah. they have, they have Facebook, they have YouTube, they have yeah. everything yeah. that they have. There's no, there's no difference in third world anymore. They have the same influences. The young people in Africa have the same influences our, our, pe- right. our kids do. So it's the same um, influences. And, and so I, I say all that because this one, you, we have to stand in our authority. That's right. There's two things you have to remember in dealing with demonic forces, your righteousness and your authority, your position and your possession. So when I'm dealing with demonic forces, whether it's healing, whether it's oppression, it's my position and my possession. My position is I'm righteous. My possession I have is authority. And I, and, and with that, I use his name. Um, all Jesus said when he dealt with the spirit was shut up and come out. Yeah. That's what I say with me and Brother Jerry. We don't let them. We don't let them act out. You don't let them talk. No, yeah. we come up in the line. Brother Jerry will notice it. I'll notice it, and you might see me retch up and grab their maybe their wrist or something. But uh, he'll say if we notice it down the line, he'll say, "Go take care of that one." I'll go up and I'll say, "You shut up in the name of Jesus. You'll not act out, and we'll take care of you in a minute." And that's it. They don't do it. Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about. You can tell it's pretty rough. But yet, by the time Brother Jerry gets up there and we both praying, then we get him set free. But I like what Brother Justin's saying. We have the authority. Before I ever ministered to any of the uh, the ushers, the catchers, or the security, I give them a full sheet on their power and authority. Full sheet. 
I've got it in my notebook there. Well, full we'll, sheet I we'll gave you. We'll go ahead and link that. Yeah. I, I have it too. I got full, it. full one on power and authority. You don't know that? You better stay away from them. Mm-hmm. Now I'm talking about demon possession now because mm-hmm. I've come up with some that, you know, that uh, they knew what they were doing because they were higher rank. You know, there's positions just like anything else, you know. And uh, I know when I was in the hospital mm-hmm. and uh, I went in for COVID and I was planning on going home. And, uh, you know, didn't, didn't say a whole lot, just we're going to bring your oxygen level up. I figured they'd give me a little bit of antibiotics, send me home. They didn't put me in the hospital. And when they rolled me on that third floor, I said, I, I feel the spirit of death here stronger than I have in any place. And that girl looked down and said, so you know spiritual things? I said, I know one thing. There's a spirit of death in oh, here. Yeah. She looked at me, She said, they're dying like flies. This was a nurse. And so I said, well, get to my room. We'll take care of that spirit of death. So we got to my room, and I said, spirit of death, you're not allowed in here. I don't care who's been in here. I don't care if you've been in here. You won't be in here anymore. And uh, because that's all it is, and there's no fear, and you know right. your power and authority. Right. And then you deal with the word. And But a lot of times, like I said, some people just, they don't want to be set free for certain reasons, you know. And, of course, the devil's game is to try to make everybody see it in a different light to where there's no power there. Oh, there's power. Plenty. In yeah. Jesus' yeah. name, there's the always power. power. Yeah. All the power you need. All the power. Yeah, and I, I would say also understanding the enemy wants an audience. Always. So my thing is volume doesn't equate more authority. No. Mm-hmm. Screaming at the devil Not doesn't create more authority. <laughs> it causes more chaos, yes, and it, it causes the enemy to to get the attention he's wanting. That's right. Mm-hmm. And so, the, so it's better to, if it's not something that's immediate, it's better to take them out. That's what you were that's ministering right. the other day. You always take them out. You, you take them out because the enemy wants to display himself. And therefore, it's like it's like even if a person is coming in to distract a meeting that has an assignment, they're wanting that distraction. So the best thing is to do is is don't give them what they want. That's right. And and take the authority. Um, take the authority away from, from what they're trying to do and and remove them from it because because they're wanting the attention. And that's why that's another reason why some spirits aren't cast out because because the person that is You're right. is is hold, they they want the attention, they want the attention of what that's doing. So I guess as as the body as we're there in these corporate environments when these situations arise, what role are we to take? If if Justin goes up and he starts having a little difficulty. Now maybe nobody else would see it, but I do. I start praying right. for him in the spirit. Right. Because I know there now, it's not Justin. There's an influence in here, like he talked about a while ago mm-hmm. in that meeting. I've done it for Brother Jerry, and I and and sometimes never know where it comes from. Sometimes I'll know where it comes from, and I'll go over and take care of it. But you recognize it, and then what you do is you you bind it, you rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and you command it to stop. And usually, it's it's I've never had a time it didn't. Yeah. But I shouldn't be the only one in a meeting yeah. that would recognize that because they should. everybody has power and authority to principalities and powers, rulers of darkness to do that. But not everybody knows that. What would you want? The people in your congregation. I, I, I would say I would say one, just kind of praying praying in the spirit yeah, if it's something that's spirit. you know, and it can come in many forms. Some people like I don't have a problem with dancing during worship, but there's some people that can that that it can be in a way where they're it's it's a distraction unto themselves. They're drawing attention. They're drawing attention. And it's like, no, this our attention's on him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It said, but I'm there's nothing wrong with so I'm not saying sure. you don't dance or don't, during worship. But it's the same thing. It's like it if I'm sitting next to someone, then that that's doing something that's that's more distracting than it is whatever. I just put my my just put same my hand thing. on my just, yeah. hey hey you yeah. okay? Just yeah. put the hand on the shoulder because then it's making them conscious. Like hey, you, you okay? Um, and just praying in the spirit and taking authority, take you know, taking authority over that. Um, so for me, it would be more or less just praying in the spirit under your breath, kind yeah. of. Yeah, you you know, have to do it like, out loud. You know, because. We don't we don't want distraction because it could be one distraction that's going to hinder a person from hearing what they need to hear. <laughs> be somebody start, run around the building. Yeah, that's real. Well, then you but start, not every time. You almost start getting those people that air on the other side, like they become like the the demon hunters. You know, like just like 
<laughs> yeah, and you it's don't like, want like that. the the spirits of lifeguards. Like, like, calm down, bro. That person coughed. It's yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, it's like, it's, like, you know, it's like no, it's like it's, it's like come on, it's like no, it's just. Like, no, just it's about knowing the whole spirit. You'll, you'll, yeah. you'll, if you're in tune, you'll know. It's you'll like, know this is, something's not right here. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember being at a Rodney Howard Brown meeting, and a lady got up and was doing something in the middle of the service. But it was while he was preaching, and they had the ushers take her out. Took her out. But yet, when Dr. Silva had a meeting, um, a woman came up to be prayed for. Another guy came after. The ushers were trying to stop him, but he he said, come here. You know, there's times where I think that there were hindrances from Jesus, and and the, the disciples would stop them. And yeah. But there was times also when Jesus said, no, let them, let them come mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I think it's knowing, it's just having a knowing here that something's, there's not peace there. Mm-hmm. It's like the girl that showed showed out, and it was a younger girl, and she wasn't possessed, okay? But during Richard Roberts' healing service, because he's just getting ready to come up, starting to move in the gifts of the Spirit, calling things out, and the girl in the back of the deal, she went wild, went back there, took care of it. She'd take it right back on. Now, her mother was there, too, and that's a good thing, because her mother was, and I so I asked her mother, she under a medication. First thing I asked her, because of medication can cause an uh, an open, but not possession, okay? And so finally, I knew she wasn't going to release it. We took her out. As soon as we did, it didn't harm the anointing with Richard at all. He went ahead and ministered to the people. People got delivered. So sometimes you just take them out, get them out, but we still ministered to her. And then she went into a convulsion type deal, and so it was time to get the medics there. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just different things. you got to just know, what am I hearing? And what you're hearing in the Spirit is the right thing, you know, and uh, because yeah, but you're right. Some people, that's what they they want. De- they want to chase demons. They really don't, but they think they, well, they do. You know? Exactly, they think they are ready to get into the ring with the they're champ. Not, they're, they're not. not no. you know, like, uh-huh. like, like know your weight category. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I I always think of that part of it too is being there when you're when you're experiencing it. And this is something that I can tell you that I but we're there to receive. We're there to, you know, we're, we hopefully we're there in the church corporate setting for the right reasons, but I'll be the first to admit, like, I'm like, Oh, do I, is that my authority and or responsibility? Well, it'll all be under whoever, whoever yeah. is yeah. ministering. Exactly. That's where it's, it's like, under. I don't, I, yeah. I, I personally, you, you've had that check in your spirit. Like, Oh, that's, that's a little yeah. odd. But then I, I could be the first to tell you, I'm not praying in the spirit for yeah. it, but I, I, yeah. I, I but it, it always, that. it always comes down. At least that's what I was taught to whoever's, administrative authority, service yeah. whoever's in authority then you mm-hmm. follow their lead and if, I, if they say come up you come up if they don't yeah. you can still be praying for them and and taking authority and sitting in the seat mm-hmm. i mean we have a lot of people in a lot of the service i'll hear brother jerry say everybody start praying reach your hands out here and pray he don't want them up there he just wants them to reach your hand out and start praying released. Mm-hmm. and what and pray in the spirit a lot of time he'll say yeah. and now a lot of times when he says that it's a little harder Whatever we're doing is sometimes a little harder than the norm. I, that's all I know how to yeah. say it. I don't really know, but but a lot of time. But he didn't call them up there, and a lot of times when people run up there trying to do something, it's out of order. Once it gets out of order, it can cause more of a problem than it does being or And it doesn't mean they're intended to do that at all. Mm-hmm. But that, like I said, it goes back to it be whoever is the whoever is the authority. An authority of that that's service. right that service to, to know that. Well, in light of all of all the things we've talked about, we still always end with this one question. And you guys know very well that we're all about making winners in life. Correct. That's what this ministry lives on is seeing people win in Christ in the things that you said, the authority and understanding who they are and what authority they have. So can I ask you both to answer what does that statement mean when you hear it? Specifically in light of what we're talking about, what does it mean to be a winner in life? Winner in, Well, winner in life to me is to be to have all the promises God tells you you can have and walk in them. And if you do that, you're a winner in life because you're not going to go through anything that he doesn't already know what to do, conquer. And that's where leading of the Holy Spirit comes. If he says don't go in a store, you don't go in a store. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were in uh, Miami, Florida. We're getting ready to go take the money from the offering the night before, me and Brian Jacobs. And uh, that was one of our jobs as we went and deposited the funds where that way nobody could rob or anything like that. We're halfway on the way, and the Lord says, go get a cup of coffee. I said, Lord, we can't get a cup of coffee. Brother Jerry's ministering. You know, we got to get this offering in, get back, because he'll need our assistance. The Lord said, you need to stop and have a cup of coffee. 
I heard it twice. And so I looked at Brian and I said, Brian, we're going to stop and have a cup of coffee. And he said, really? He said, why? And I said, I guess we need a cappuccino. And so we stopped and got a cup of coffee. The time we got there, they were robbing the bank. Wow. And had we got there the same time, they would have got all of our money that we had. <laughs> and we did, uh, there's police cars all around. And we go up and we says, what's going on? They said, well, there's been a bank robbery. And by listening to the Lord, just on that right there. So the evil that wanted our money couldn't get our money because God already had it in control. And that's the that's a winner. I've missed so many bank robberies then. <laughs> oh, it didn't call to the coffee shop. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, no. Thank sometimes you, Lord. It's I was flesh. Saying, you know, uh, <laughs> sometimes it's the flesh saying I need a cup of coffee. Oh. I would err on that side for me. Uh, <laughs> How about you, Pastor? Oh, I'd say just, um, I mean, there's so many ways you can answer, answer this question for me. Um, I would say it's just walking in the fullness. That's right. Of, um, and being like Jesus, you yeah, know. Definitely. Living like Jesus, walking like Jesus, loving like Jesus, um, you know, and, I, and, and being that uh, to to humanity, you know, I, I think that's where it, where it comes down to is being like Him everywhere. So, and and when you're like Him everywhere, you're gonna win. Yeah. So. Come on. Well, thank you again. It was an honor to sit down with both of you. I feel like these are two of the generals of the faith awesome. that we got to hear yeah. and get imparted to. So. Uh, church body, as you listen to this, make sure you thank them for their time when you see them. We appreciate them pouring into us in, a, in an area that maybe we needed some clarity on um, as a whole body. So, again, thank you guys both for being here. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always great. This appreciate so you too. And go give them Jesus. Go give them Jesus. We can't Amen. end without that. Wow, that wraps up our series on Not Today, Satan. And we really hope that you got a lot out of it. Again, linked in the show notes will be Joe McCroskey's scripture list where you can understand what your role and your authority as a believer in and what you can stand on when you're in situations like this. And our testimony link. We want to make sure that if you have experienced freedom, that you have an opportunity to tell us about it so we can rejoice and praise the Lord with you. We are really thankful that you continue to tune in and listen to this podcast. And we'll see you next Friday for another winning conversation.